In most cases, accessing a network resource requires a user account. In this video, we'll talk about user provisioning and deprovisioning. Provisioning would be used for newly hired employees, where there is a standard onboarding process for those new hires, which would include reviewing and signing of acceptable use policies, user awareness and training about security issues, how to conduct themselves in the corporate environment, and so on. Deprovisioning would involve activities such as conducting an exit interview or removing access, for example, disabling a user account once they've left the company versus deleting their user account. We might do that so we can still track what they did or take a look at any work they were working on or in some cases even decrypt things that were decrypted with their user account. Another way to remove access with user deprovisioning is to revoke an associated PKI certificate or certificates issued to the user and or devices that they used. For instance, if a user was issued a company smartphone that could connect to the VPN, that smartphone might use a PKI certificate to authenticate to the VPN. Well, if that certificate's revoked, it can't connect to the VPN anymore. Common tasks with user provisioning and management overall down to deprovisioning include the creation of the user account, the modification of the user account while it's in use, for instance, changing attributes such as last name if somebody gets married or changing a password if it's forgotten. There is the disabling of a user account. This might be done, for instance, if a user is on sick leave or parental leave. And finally, of course, there's user account deletion. Data from other human resource apps can also be used or integrated with a current solution that might be used. For instance, we might link Active Directory user accounts with a PeopleSoft application. With user account creation, users are normally then added to groups after they have an account. Now, this is based on their required access to resources to complete job-specific tasks. Password policies are also a part of user provisioning, although this is normally automated. For instance, in an Active Directory environment, we would have a domain group policy object that applies to everybody in the domain so that we have the same password policy in effect. So it would include things like the minimum and maximum password ages, a minimum password length, password complexity, and so on. Now that's not to say that in an Active Directory environment, you can't have password settings for different groups of users. You can, just not through group policy. Instead, you would configure fine-grained password policies. In some cases, it's appropriate to use self-service user provisioning, where users can request an account and they can set their own password. An example of this that we've all come across at some point, I'm sure, is using a website that requires a user account before you can participate in the website. So in some cases, you'll be able to create a free account where you can also set your own password. So that's an example of self-service user provisioning. In this video, we discussed user provisioning and deprovisioning.